Over the past few years, baseball has become more objective. The data revolution has allowed us to quantify everything in the game in the hopes of finding even the smallest edge. But one of the things that's kind of been left out of that picture is command. Command is thrown around all the time as an, as an excuse for a poor outing when another reason isn't as accessible. But on the public side, we don't really have a way to quantify command at all. We can't say pitcher A misses his intended zone by about nine inches on average, and pitcher B misses his intended zone by about six to seven on average. Therefore, pitcher B has objectively better command. But internally, in some major league organizations, they are doing this. They have the ability to kind of look at intended zone, look at the result of the pitch, find a difference between the two, and come up with an average misplot for a pitcher. And they're manipulating catcher targets to help pitchers improve their command. So let's dig into a topic that I think will gain a ton of steam in the coming years, command tracking, optimizing catcher targets, and how it all relates to Tyler Glass now. One thing we have to accept is that even the best pitchers in the game miss their target most of the time. Baseball is a game of failure, and command charts help us quantify that failure. This chart, posted on Twitter by Chris Langan of Driveline, is probably the most visually intuitive command chart that I've seen. This heat map is from the pitcher's perspective. The center of the plot is simply where the pitcher intended the pitch to land, wherever that was in the zone. This intended zone is something that's tracked manually by a company like Inside Edge, Stats LLC, or even Sports Info Solutions. The heat map surrounding that origin point is the concentration of where the result of the pitch actually ended up relative to the intended zone. If we assume that this is a right-handed pitcher, the plot is communicating that regardless of where the pitcher intended to throw that ball, he tends to miss up and away from his target. We could even find a league average miss for a specific pitch, specific handedness, and specific location. And that's incredibly important for one reason in particular. If you miss your intended zone by well more than league average, we now have an objective baseline to compare things to. We have something to apply drills to, apply constraints to, apply anything to, to understand whether that's actually influencing the baseline command of a pitcher. So how do we improve command? How do we take that pitcher who's missing his intended zone with his fastball by about 13 or 14 inches when the league average is only around nine? It's a tricky, tricky question, and one that I don't think there's a direct answer to right now. Some theories around it are really interesting, though. I won't get too deep into them. One of them has to do with varying the weight of a baseball, undersized and oversized baseballs, uh, known as command balls, to influence a pitcher to miss in the opposite direction of where he naturally misses, hopefully bringing that miss uh, down slightly more towards his intended zone. There's other, other theories out there that directly relate to finger pressure on the ball, but the one I want to talk about that I mentioned earlier is optimizing catcher targets. And in talking to individuals in and around baseball, the principal thing I've heard is that in sub two strike counts, catchers set up way too aggressively. And command charts can help you kind of inform where the optimal catcher target is. For example, take a look at Rockies catcher Elias Diaz and John Gray. Diaz's setup is a perfect example of a catcher's over aggression in sub two strike counts. The batter is Estrubo Cabrera. This is the first inning of the game and all these pitchers are before Gray gets to two strikes. If we assume that Gray's pitch is at least an average major league fastball, and his miss pattern is consistent with most righties, which means he tends to miss arm side up, why is Diaz's target at the bottom corner of the zone? If you plot a simple command chart over this, Gray's most common miss will end up being off the plate. Why not take that catcher target and bring it into the zone so that more of his misses end up on the edges of the plate as opposed to way off the plate. And this goes for most breaking balls as well. Let's jump to the Pirates and take a look at Mitch Keller and Michael Perez. If the tendency for a righty is to pull the pitch glove side down, down and away from a righty, why is the target for Keller's slider off the plate? That means Keller is more than likely putting his slider off the plate in sub two strike counts. The idea is that a pitcher has a better chance of throwing a strike if the target is actually informed by his miss pattern. And this isn't necessarily just a theory. This is something major league organizations are doing at the major league level right now, and I can prove it. As one individual told me, you wanna give the pitcher as big of a target as possible to miss. And one of the greatest examples of this in major league baseball is Tyler Glass now. And from what I can glean, the Rays apply kind of a one target philosophy with a lot of their pitchers. If you rip any sample of pitches from Glass now this season, you'll notice that Zunino isn't setting up on the edges at all. Zunino's glove is kind of locked around the center of the plate, regardless of pitch type, and Glassnow is just letting it rip. 
The same occurs with Peter Fairbanks, a reliever for the Rays who has a similar repertoire to Glass now. He focuses on high fastballs and low breaking balls. Zunino's target remains the same for both pitches. It's the center of the plate. Another more subtle example is what Will Smith does with a pitcher like Walker Buehler. Buehler's primary breaking ball location against righties is down and away, yet Smith's target isn't usually down and away. It's just generally down in the zone. I'd call this more of a hedged catcher targeting example, but it's also one that I think is a little bit more common than the Rays. Other teams like the Dodgers are not using the one target philosophy that I believe the Rays are. They're kind of just adjusting the catcher's target slightly to better accommodate Bueller's standard miss pattern. This is probably because they know Bueller's average miss on his breaking balls are glove side down or pulled, so to speak. They're down and away from the intended zone. So by setting up middle down, what you're doing is you're creating a greater chance that that pitch actually ends up in the intended zone, which is down and away. Whereas if you set up down and away and Bueller pulls that pitch, which he most often does, that pitch is gonna end up off the plate. And again, in two strike counts, Bueller's pitch is so good, that slider is so good that I think the Dodgers want that in the zone more often. And that's a principal point that relates back to Glasnow and to Fairbanks and to Bueller, is that all those pitches, the fastball curveball, fastball slider of Fairbanks, fastball slider of Bueller, are really good. They're optimized on the stuff side, the movement and velocity side of things, such that they can live in the zone more often without as much consequence. Using these command charts to influence catcher targets matters because all we've kind of heard since Rapsodo has started popping up at spring training facilities over the last couple of years relates to pitch design and improving stuff. And I think that's incredibly important. It's not gonna change anytime soon. That relates to optimizing the velocity, the pitch shape, uh, the pitch movement for a particular pitcher given how he moves. Will always be number one in my opinion. But we're very much in the dark as to the execution side of things. We really don't have any idea of who holds their command best through a season as workload jumps up, even individual starts who holds their command later in starts. Is that the main reason why relievers aren't able to be stretched out into starters, even if their stuff maintains, maybe their command falls off? These are really interesting questions that I think would vault the public understanding of command forward a ton, and we're limited in that. But one of the things that I think would push it forward on the public side is if one of the big sites like Fangraphs Baseball Savant Brooks Baseball, any of them, came up with their own intended zone data, or even came up with a way to kind of back into where they think the pitch well, pitcher was trying to throw a given pitch, and then plotting that against the result of the pitch and coming up with their own misplots or guesstimated misplots. Because even if something like Inside Edge's intended zone data only gets us, you know, 60% of the way to answering this question, I'd take on the public side something that gets us only 30 or 40% of the way there through Baseball Savant or Brooks Baseball, because we're currently kind of at, let's say, 0 to 10%. And that's not particularly valuable. And it's not really surprising to me at all that the smartest teams in baseball are the ones thinking about these intended zone charts and command charts and optimizing catcher targets like the Rays, as we talked about the Dodgers, uh, Astros are doing this, the Yankees are doing this, a variety of other teams are doing this. The smartest teams in baseball are doing this. It's no surprise. And once I think that becomes more of a universal thing across the league, which I'm betting it will in the next couple of years, we'll start to have a much better understanding, uh, a kind of a universal, I'd say, catcher target to some extent in sub two strike counts.